What's up everybody and welcome to the Medbros channel. Uh, today we booted out Herman and it is me, Shaman, and I have my sister here. Hi guys. Uh, I booted. Otherwise known as Core Beauty. And in today's video, we are going to focus on a controversial topic and that is weed. Oh, good old Mary Jane. <laughs> So with all of the talk about the decriminalization of marijuana and a lot of legal changes across the United States over the past few years, marijuana has always been a hot topic. So we thought we would talk about the science of it. And also my you know, great expert opinion is really not gonna be that contributory to this video because I'm just gonna be making brownies. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the science and we're gonna do a little, of a little bit of a casual conversation as well. So if you wanna hear our personal opinion on it, stick until the end. But for now, we are gonna bake some brownies and talk about the science. All right. So, so are you gonna go into how much you get baked every day? We may discuss it at the end of the video, so stay tuned and don't you dare skip. <laughs> All right. So before I let Shavin start, I'm just gonna give you guys an intro of what I'm doing. Um, so while he talks, I can at least get started on these. Um, so we all know if you're a fan or not a fan, but <laughs> if you've been watching me and Shaman and Herman, you'll know from a lot of our tag videos that I'm a terrible baker. So this is quite a challenge for me, but uh, I'm gonna try my hardest to not burn these. So we're using the Betty Crocker. Guys, just for Supreme reference, the last shot. time she made a cake, as Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay would say, it looked like Gandhi flip flop. Wait, is he in this video? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. They're um, trying to kick me out. So I already preheated the oven, and I'm gonna stir the brownie mix, water, oil, and egg. I'm literally just following instructions, but just letting you guys know what I'm doing while he's talking. So go ahead. We'll see how it turns out. Make your predictions now. Will it fail? or will it flop? I know those are the same thing, because there's only one answer. All right, so let's get into the science here. So I'll have all my sources down below in the description if you're interested. So I know a lot of people on YouTube and social media are very pro-weed, but we are gonna look into both the pros and the cons, um, because in the academic community, there is more and more uh, literature becoming available and all of it is not positive. So let's get into it. So first let's get into what doctors actually prescribe marijuana for. Uh, so Penny, do you have any thoughts about this before I give you the scientific answer? So I've actually had, I would say about 20 patients who I've seen when I inquire about what medications they use in recreational drug history, they do actually use marijuana. So it's not something that's uncommon and actually a lot in the elderly population too. So it's Definitely not like something that young people only are doing, but I've seen it mainly used for pain relief. Yep, pain relief yeah. is a very common um, indication. Marijuana does decrease intraocular pressure, but not a lot of ophthalmologists actually prescribe it for glaucoma. Uh, so technically it is an indication. Um, like you mentioned, pain is a big one. Neuropathic pain, uh, chronic pain, although chronic pain um, the studies are conflicting, but it is still prescribed for chronic pain. Also spinal cord injuries and patients with MS or multiple sclerosis. And there's also some psychological uh, diseases like PTSD, um, anxiety disorders, sleep disorders. Um, and then there are also a ton of not doctor prescribed uses, but more patients take it on themselves to use. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think um, the one thing that I would say is really important in those types of conversations is knowing what you're comparing the alternative to. So for example, um, I think for like glaucoma, et cetera, maybe ophthalmologists don't recommend it as not enough because there are uh, evidence-based pharmaceuticals available mm -hmm. that are maybe more familiar and more controlled uh, and have more controlled studies than marijuana does for glaucoma versus something like chronic pain, where honestly, a lot of the alternative is opioids. And for that instance, we know that opioids aren't good. So even if we are not too familiar with marijuana, if there haven't been as bad drastic outcomes as there have been documented with opioids, I think that is more convincing. So it's also interesting to look at what you're comparing the alternatives to. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. For a lot of these indications, there are already drugs that doctors are more familiar with. They don't want to get into the legal trouble of prescribing marijuana, uh, something happens, or they just don't feel like it's a uh, legitimate uh, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. prescription. So I feel like marijuana is less prescribed uh, for those reasons. A lot of the times when patients advocate for themselves and say that they've been using marijuana, it helps. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like doctors are much more likely to uh, go along with a treatment plan mm -hmm. if the patient advocates uh, for use versus a doctor prescribing it mm -hmm. themselves. I find yep. that very rare. So if I fail this egg, it will be edited out. But if it works, you'll see it. Okay. Did she do the one-hander? No, I didn't. No, but it was oh, the first it time. Worked. Very nice. It worked. I know, I'm such a pro. Um, Ramsey Jr. It's, the people are gonna be like, really? All right, so that is the physician side of the um, positives and the indications for marijuana. What about what we've heard about our friends, um, other patients, about why they use marijuana? because there are a multitude of reasons that you mentioned. I do see that people are using marijuana, but it's not the cool thing to do anymore yeah. like it used to be. Like it was like very illegal. It was a very mm -hmm. cool thing to do. People were like, yeah, I smoke marijuana. You smoke marijuana, you smoke marijuana. Yeah, and then everyone knew who smoked marijuana. Yeah. Now people just do it after work and it's like whatever. Yeah, I definitely think it was a, because it was so illegal, it was cool. Like we would have dogs come in and it would be like, watch out for the dogs coming in. Like it was very like cool because it was illegal. Yeah. One of the reasons is that it's used recreationally, kind of like how alcohol is used in a group yeah, setting. Yeah, kind of like that. It's like the cool thing, okay? Another thing that I have heard is that it really helps people to sleep. Mm -hmm. Some people swear that they can't go to sleep properly mm -hmm. uh, without marijuana. Anxiety, for sure, is another one I've commonly seen. And there are some people, including some very prominent social media figures, that do swear that it helps you think better, it um, enraptures your mind into another space where you can mm -hmm. understand Creativity. and perceive things that, yeah, that you couldn't otherwise. And while this might be very common, it is not backed by any scientific literature that I could find. In fact, it's quite the opposite. And when we get into the negatives, which we'll be going to shortly, it will be discussed further. Some other clinical conditions that might be treated with marijuana, uh, other, than the, other than the ones we mentioned, are nausea. Mm -hmm. So uh, people are nauseous, they are prescribed marijuana. Um, AIDS associated anorexia and wasting, uh, inflammation just generally, and epilepsy. Okay, interesting. I definitely can understand the appetite stimulant one for sure because even recreationally people would tell you, I've got the munchies. This is gonna be very fudgy. I'm wondering if I even overdid it. There's okay, it's three gonna be sets. very chocolatey. Look how lumpy it is with all those chunks. So where the literature is at today, so marijuana has been shown to be an effective anti-emetic, which means it helps patients who have nausea. So that has been scientifically shown. It also helps with chronic pain. There have been statistically significant reductions in pain when patients are using uh, marijuana. It's also used in patients with multiple sclerosis. So patients who used marijuana reported a reduction in spasticity symptoms. Uh, so we've had a bit of a mishap here uh, beneath what's going on here. I thought that this was the only pan I had, so I used it, but I found a better pan that would make my brownies taste better. Now I'm transferring it so we can actually get something that looks good. But I don't know. Oh, that's spillage. Oh, amateur mistake. What? Nothing. No, not a big deal. Oh. It's a joke. Let's quickly go over the positive effects of marijuana that people commonly cite but aren't actually true. So let's start with cancer. There is insufficient evidence to make any statement about the efficacy of marijuana as a treatment for cancer. Um, so right now the research suggests that it should not be used and no doctor is going to prescribe you marijuana for cancer. But could we find a small group of cancers that respond well to marijuana in the future? Possibly, but right now there's no evidence to suggest so. We are talking about cancer itself, not cancer pain. Because like we said, pain is treated with marijuana in some instances. There is a little bit of research to suggest that it could possibly be helpful for patients with irritable bowel uh, syndrome, which is basically just your uh, belly feeling bad without really a 
well-diagnosed or defined reason. Dementia is also another thing that people worry about and want to prevent, especially if it runs in the family. And um, studies have shown that marijuana has had no statistically significant um, impact on preventing dementia. Yes, and there are a whole host of other conditions that people think marijuana can treat, but actually can, but we can't go into all of them in this video. So feel free to read the resources down below in the description if you're interested. Um, but maybe we missed like a couple of other positive effects that have been shown. Um, but for the most part, that is it. So right now, what is the status of those brownies? Those brownies have headed into the oven and they are expected to be perfect, moist, baked now did you brownies. get the special ingredient absolutely all I right did. i'm really hoping the special ingredient it cannot be on youtube because we will get demonetized we're gonna get demonetized anyway i know youtube hates us but um betty crocker actually has a secret uh recipe on betty crocker cannabis.com <laughs> where she tells you how to incorporate it into your recipe at home Betty. especially on thanksgiving which is today we're giving thanks to betty <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting people don't know this is during thanksgiving day we needed some dessert we needed to make it a little extra special dessert so we had beneath cook us some uh brownies with some mm -hmm. special Sprinkles. Oh, I wish you guys could see our mother in the corner. <laughs> All right. All uh, right. Wait. Who's gonna lick the spoon? I'm not. I decided. I'm not. Herman, I'll we need you. Oh, on camera. Lick the spoon and give us the review. I swear something smells off in this area. Give us the review, good sir. Doesn't it? No. Great. All right. Let's see what's up. Ew, you're so disgusting. The way you licked it. No, he doesn't like it. How is it? He doesn't like it. He does not like it. That's a face of someone who doesn't That is like a it. bad sign for really? Benit's cooking already. No, it's great. Honestly, it's really good. What did you put in there? Especially the special Brownie ingredients. Bro, sauce. I didn't do anything. I just followed a recipe. Special sauce? Yeah, but that's all I do. She just added a little bit of spice. I think he added a little bit of extra in that special stuff. All right, whatever. Okay, but anyways. Transitioning now from the positives, and I'm sure you guys can probably have more positive listed in the description down below, but now we are gonna transition to the negatives, which is gonna make some people sad, angry, I don't know. Joe Rogan is gonna come out here specifically Joe, come looking for you. <laughs> Joe, if you got a problem, just take it up with my brother, dislike his Instagram. Stop telling everyone to always go to my Instagram. And dislike <laughs> I don't have social media. You will have it on my. I will Joe can't go reach me. Right, I know that we are delving into bad territory here, and I know y'all are getting angry already. I didn't say a word. Why are you guys getting angry? Stop Let's, get, Let's get into it, though. Are you ready? First, Let's go. Let's ask beneath. What do you think are some negative effects of marijuana? And then I'll let you know if it's scientifically backed by okay. the literature. This is not a scientific answer, but from what I have seen. People get really lazy. Like they just don't do things productively. I like I've heard that from people who are like chronic users and they just feel like they're not productive, they're lazy, they're sleepy kind of, they're eating all the time. It's just a very sedentary lifestyle. I mean, I'm not saying go run to some amphetamines, but I'm just saying like it's not uh that's like the anecdotal side effect I've heard. Yeah, so marijuana affects everybody's brains differently. And I have heard that. I've also heard the opposite, that it really stimulates the brain. So I think it probably does vary a little bit depending on the person, but these studies look at a number of patients and looks at the average and sees if there's statistically significant differences. And because everyone has a whole host of experiences, there has been no study that shows that marijuana makes you more lazy. So that myth is busted here. So well, this is going to be controversial to some of you, but the amount of evidence is actually quite high and marijuana is addictive that is a fact approximately nine percent of those who experiment with marijuana become addicted and that number rises to one in six of those who use marijuana who start as teenagers become addicted and 25 to 50 percent of those who smoke marijuana daily are addicted so those are some pretty um, drastic numbers. Drastic numbers, and the amount of evidence and the amount of studies here is actually quite high. Marijuana does, and again, the 
definition of addictiveness will vary. Obviously, some substances are more addictive than others and to different degrees and um, cause different life changes. Uh, so you can weigh for yourself, uh, yeah, marijuana is addictive, but not in a bad way. It doesn't really like, Yeah. it's not like heroin addictive. This is definitely a point that I did read about because uh, there is a really well-documented, even just aside from reading the study, there is a well-documented association with um, marijuana use and schizophrenia. So um, when you, you know, early onset marijuana use and schizophrenia um, development as you get older. So um, it definitely affects brain development, which is gonna lead me into this. As compared with unexposed controls, adults who smoke marijuana regularly during adolescence have impaired neuro neural connectivity or fewer fibers in specific brain regions. Now that you brought up schizophrenia, it has, marijuana has been associated with schizophrenia, but it's unclear if people have like bad life situations and those are the patients who end up having schizophrenia and they end up being the ones that use marijuana and they're totally unlinked, but they're associated. Uh, or is it a causality? People smoke marijuana when they're 15, 16, 17, 18, and then when they're 22, 23, 24, they develop schizophrenia. So it's unclear whether there's a causal association or there's just, just a correlation. correlation. And you'll hear that a lot, but it's something you need to drill into your mind. The thing you need to know about schizophrenia is that patients who already have schizophrenia, their condition is exacerbated by marijuana. So you definitely do not wanna be taking uh, marijuana if you have a condition like schizophrenia. Also, marijuana has the potential to cause schizophrenia if you have a pre-existing genetic vulnerability. In general, you're just gonna see with a lot of this stuff, the data is unclear and we need to study this drug much more because it is still a class one drug, which means that the amount of research that can be done on it in the US is kind of limited. So we need way more studies, way stronger studies um, to determine what is going on with this drug. That's gonna be a defining theme, both for what the points we've already made in this video and the points we're about to make. The other kind of big point is that marijuana can be linked to and be seen as a gateway drug, which means um, gateway drugs are kind of drugs that open the gates to other substances, whether it's through lacing of other substances or kind of just familiarizing yourself with the um, accessibility of um, other drugs that you know are illegal. Although there are some findings that support the idea that marijuana is a gateway drug, other drugs like alcohol and nicotine can also be categorized as, gate as gateway drugs since they also prime the brain for a heightened response to other drugs. But an alternative explanation is that people who are more susceptible to drug behavior seeking behavior are simply more likely to start with marijuana because of its accessibility um, and their subsequent social interactions with other drug users that would increase the probability that they would try other drugs. And there have been a multitude of studies with marijuana and your school performance. And so all of these studies do point to the fact that there is a hit that your cranium takes when you use marijuana uh, for an extended period of time and in large doses. Oof. Yo, GPA so, gonna let me, let me find. There are a ton of confounding factors in a lot of these studies and a lot of these are reported patients at different doses using them somewhat regularly but not in a, like exact doses. Mm -hmm. It's not like administered like medically. It's just like have you been smoking weed in the last year? Are you dumb? Um, it's kind of that kind of stuff. So where is the literature at today? today it is that that studies have shown that adolescents who use marijuana were significantly less likely than their non-using peers to finish high school or obtain a degree and were more likely to develop dependence use other drugs or attempt suicide again it's very hard to develop determine causality especially since marijuana has been known to affect the brain in patients under 25 uh, especially in adolescents given that information and given this correlation between diminished academic achievement, uh, however marginally, and marijuana, um, there is some pretty strong evidence there to suggest that uh, you aren't going to be peak performance if you're uh, baking that brownie. But that being said, I do actually know a couple of kids who were really smart 
who smoked weed. So we're not saying like yeah, we're talking about numbers like five percent, six percent reduction. A lot of these studies, yeah. these aren't like fifty percent reductions in your academic ability. Yeah. But so again, pros and cons. Weigh it yourself. So now let's talk about motor vehicle accidents. We all know that drinking and driving is a bad idea. What about drinking and eating some weed brownies? Is that safe? And the answer is no. You should, you definitely should not be doing that because there is a good amount of evidence, a substantial amount of evidence that suggests that it does impair driving. There is a relationship between blood THC concentration and performance in controlled driving simulation studies, which are good predictors of real world, world driving ability. Blood THC levels of two to five nanograms per milliliter are, are associated with driving impairment. According to a meta-analysis, which is a pretty strong, um, piece of evidence, if you're comparing like lit reviews and whatnot, uh, the scientific papers that are really strong are meta-analyses. Mm -hmm. According to a meta-analysis, the overall risk of involvement in an accident increases by about a factor of two when a person drives soon after using marijuana. That's and scary. yeah, that's pretty substantial. For a point of reference for that value of two that I just mentioned, when you have a blood alcohol concentration greater than 0.08, your risk of getting in an accident increases fivefold. So marijuana is not as bad as drive as uh, drinking and driving, but it is bad enough to the point that you should not do it. And this is super important because who knows about this, right? When you ask a regular person, they're like, yeah, marijuana is all good, man. It's all propaganda. These, there's no negative effects. What are you guys talking about? Um, nobody talks about this stuff because it's going to get you hated or it's not the cool thing to do. And we here at the Med Bros, the reason you should subscribe to us and like our video is because we don't just tell you what you want to hear, we tell you the truth. And this is pretty strongly scientifically shown in multiple studies that drinking and smoking that weed is not a good idea. So please don't do it. There is a lack of clarity between um, marijuana and lung cancer. It's not as concrete as tobacco and lung cancer. However, it has been shown that marijuana smoking is associated with inflammation of the large airways, increased airway resistance and lung hyperinflation. Associations that are consistent with the fact that regular marijuana smokers are more likely to report symptoms of chronic bronchitis than non-smokers. However, the long-term effect of low levels of marijuana exposure do not appear to be significant. For those of you who don't know, chronic bronchitis is a COPD, obstructive lung disease, um, where you are going to have a chronic cough and lots of mucus production. It's not a pleasant disease. Oh, that was a bit of a play. But, oh my God. Well, they actually look surprisingly good. I'm gonna have to be honest with you. I'm gonna cut them. Now, we did put the chocolate chips in there, right? Yes, we did. Okay. So I we, did. Now, you did put the special substance in there, right? Yep. The... I'm a little too excited about the special substance. Given the special substance? Just what is the special substance? Now that uh, we're done baking, we can tell them. Wait, you're saying that there's no marijuana in these brownies? I didn't say that. Maybe not in your part. Now people are going to be very confused at this point. <laughs> are we smoking that marijuana or not? I mean, this is eating. If it is, it's <laughs> Are we eating marijuana or not? Well, I guess they'll never know. No, give us the definitive Wait, time out, time out. Usually, right, these these dumb episodes, these dumb series, they'll always BS you and leave you on a cliffhanger. I'm canceling that out. Nope. We're being honest here. Is there marijuana? I'm a reporter, right? Duh. I'm not answering. Is there marijuana in these brownies? Duh. Answer. Bleed. <laughs> Let's transition to some personal anecdotal evidence from our so local what, ganja oh, warrior. Weed <laughs> so do I smoke weed? The answer is no, I do not smoke weed. What a shock. And, <gasps> just stop. <laughs> what a shock. Give me a like if you were not surprised by that. That means you know me. Um, okay, so I don't smoke weed and that's for a multitude of reasons. One, I don't know where to find these drug dealers. 
<laughs> like seriously, where are they? <laughs> seriously, where are these kids getting weed left and right? And in medical school, pre-med, what you telling me they're going out the back alley out of the hospital and getting them weeds? Uh, I don't, I don't know where the heck these drug dealers are at. Uh, that's for one. For two, it costs money, and I'm a broke med. Well, I'm not broke, but. As a medical student, you got to save money wherever you can. Basically, I don't really see a need for it in my life, personally. I'm focused on other things. It's not been appealing to me personally. I don't know where to get it, and I just don't care for it. So that is why I don't smoke weed. And there are these negatives also that kind of... Um, make me just not want to do it more. Like, why would I want to impair my brain just even just a little bit, uh, especially since I'm now 25, so I would fall under that under 25 bracket or 25 or whatever, where my brain is affected. I don't want my brain affected. And do you want your brain affected? No. Nope. There you go. Um, and I just don't want to worry about driving and smoking marijuana. I don't want to worry about becoming addicted to it. So, uh, yeah, I just don't smoke weed. What about you? Um, yeah, that pretty much echoes up all of my opinions, too. Um, I would say a super unappealing thing for me is anything that is going to harm your body long term. Like, yes, I do unhealthy things like eat ice cream and eat brownies, for example. But anything that's going to mess with, like, neuron conduction or even like alcohol i don't really drink uh, as you guys know just damages your liver like anything that's like hardcore evidence-based and i don't see a need for it i'm not saying that maybe when i'm 90 and i have chronic pain i don't know i'm it's not really off the table to be <laughs> honest i probably will but right now i just don't see a use for it if anything it's probably more harmful at my stage right now so yes and there. also for me regarding recreational use uh, like we mentioned, a lot of people do it in peer groups. A lot of people might feel pressured to do it, like we said when we were younger. I don't get pressured at all. You cannot pressure me. I exert pressure Shaman, on yeah, you. Yeah, Shaman doesn't okay? do peer Nobody pressure. gets me to do anything. So no, yeah. when I was 16, 17, nobody was going to tell me to do weed. We are not judging anybody. No judgment zone. Who uses marijuana recreationally really or judge. for medical uses. Nope. Um, like some people are like, you can use it medically, but if you use it recreationally, you're a bad human being. That's yeah. the nonsense. If you use it, again, it's, you have to weigh the risks and benefits for yourself and then determine if you want to use it. Yep. And for some people, it might be the right decision. For me, I've determined that I just don't want to do it. Yep. If that makes the me uncool. The only thing that irks me is, I remember when we lived in Berkeley, our neighbor would smoke the sh yeah, it can't. Place. That is such a good point. That you gotta have like some it. common courtesy if you're you, if you are smoking marijuana and you're and you're the whole hallway smells of marijuana so bad that you can almost see it I in the air. I have a very high tolerance. I think we all do because we were grew up in California, so we have a very high tolerance. We smell weed all the time, but this person would do it multiple times a week, like it all was bad. night long. Like it was really bad. I would just want fresh air in a tiny apartment, and I just could never get it. So that was the one time where I might judge you is if you just stinking up my place constantly. Do you have any hate, by the way? Uh, Harmon, Dr. Harmon on Instagram, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And um, Panita, where can they find you at? Um, you can find me on right in your dealer's house, getting a bag. Wow. YouTube.com slash medbros or YouTube.com slash core beauty. And my Instagram is core beauty with two Ys. Two Ys? Wise, like, why am I following her? Okay, now you'll have a TikTok recently. <laughs> yeah, that has three wise because that one is what like, the why, hell? The, why the hell are you following me? <laughs> Feel free to check out our other videos. We made some juicy videos both on this Medros channel and on the Core Beauty channel. So feel free to check those out. We also have a podcast, and if you want to learn about uh, weed and other things, more explicit things feel free to check out the podcast. And other than that, let's see how these brownies are going. How's it going? Um, and for the record, these brownies do not have marijuana in them. If you made it to the end of this video, you deserve the truth and nothing but the truth. All right, guys, so these are my brownies. A little bit with this meal, but I haven't tasted them yet. I feel will like... they succeed or will they miserably fail? They might be gushy on the inside. They're probably gushy. Because Let's have a look here. Chips. Let us have a look here. Come on, we gotta we gotta get a thumbnail too here. All right. Ready? Yeah, we gotta look baked. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Try one. Mm-hmm. I, no, mm. I thought it was bad. The texture is actually <laughs> very, it's, it's not rock hard, it's not gooey. It's right in the middle where it melts in your mouth. Mm. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. I think it'll be even better when it's cold. Yeah, you gotta let them cool down a little bit. Brownies are one mm. that you have to let them cool down. All right guys, well that's gonna be it for this video. Again, assess for yourself whether or not the benefits outweigh the risks. It's up to you, no judgment either way. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment something very, very nice about Panith because she made some good brownies. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys next time. Bye guys. Later everyone.